My name is Paul Pitska, and here my colleague Daniel. We both work for Pulp, so we can go for it. What I can, uh, what I try to introduce you today, it's the basics about the Pulp, and because this is the workshop, I will show you how to install the Pulp, how to sync some packages from PyPy. I will to show you like mirroring the whole PyPy. Although it's possible, but we don't have so so big disks and connection. Then I uh, will show you just a few uh, workflows, how you can manage your packages, your repositories, and so on. So basic interaction to Pulp, we are like software package management system. Uh, today I will focus mainly for Python packages but it's not only what what the pulp can do you can in the same way sync the debian rpm packages ansible roles even the container images so in the end you can start with the python packages and if you want you can extend this to any of these supported con content yeah what you can do with the pulp it's like syncing you can upload your just your packages, managing these packages, or just mirror or distributing uh, more. So, and why PAL? For example, <clears throat> my favorite example is the second one, because sometimes there is the networks without internet connection and there is only one proxy. So you don't want to like download all the packages again and again so pulp can be there like local storage for your packages and you can use native clients for the contents you need so that's coverage even the local storage and and then <clears throat> as i mentioned before of uh, pulp there there is possibility to single application manage all various types of content so there is some uh, prerequisites what we need and uh, that's just in the minute and there is various ways how to install pal i will show you one of the easiest but there is more you can install directly from pypy like from python packages or if you are on rpm distro you can install from RPM. It's not really maintained by us, but if you know the catalog project, they maintain the project how to uh, install Pulp by RPM. Then we got our Pulp installer and thing called the Pulp Lift, uh, which helps you a lot. Pulp installer is used uh, for any various installation types, and Pulp Lift, it's yet help you to set up the uh, virtual machines that like do the order setup for you like pulp lifts just prepare the virtual machines and run the pulp installer and very lately uh, we introduced the single container which you can try with docker but i don't use this way but if you want to know more you can go for pulpproject.org and it's pretty easy, but it will install like all plugins, not only the Python like I want to show you today, but it will install all the supported plugins like that RPM, Ansible, and so on. So that's why I choose the pulp installer way. So there is some requirements, as I said. So we need Vagrant, uh, then Libvirt or Virtualbox. I'm not on like RPM distro, so I'm using VirtualBox. So in that case, you use the same. Uh, you need export this Vagrant default provider. Do not specify it in command line. Then you just need the Ansible, Ansible Galaxy, and Git client. That's pretty it. And I think that's pretty nice to inter interaction, so I can show you how to install the pulp. Here it's like few commands, but I will show you in the command line. Okay, I think it's visible. 
maybe I can make it bigger if you want. Any feedback on this? Okay, looks, that's fine. So first, just git clone our installer. It's pretty fast. It's like few unsuitable playbooks. We use few submodules. So when you first time uh, clone our pod installer repository, you need like update and in its few submodules. Okay, typo, so update. Yeah, that's pretty it. And now, if you got the Vagrant, I will just show you that uh, we support many boxes. Uh, today demo will be, I use the Fedora 33 box, but I just show you there is like various possibilities, what you can try, pulp. You can see from Debian, Fedora, and CentOS. Uh, we use the Sandbox one. It's for the users that it's easier from the source the code, but this is not the scope of today workshop. Okay. Yeah, and I forget there is example config. We will be using that sandbox, that's the user. There is another option that you don't override this one, but you uh, create the local.user config.yaml, but I will use this one. Here, uh, basic options are set, so you just need uncommentable Python. I will add pipe file here, but you can comment it out, but I would say this is fine. And now let's make our Vagrant script to prepare everything for you. So as I said, we use the sandbox on Fedora 33. Okay, it's prepare the guest for you. But if you will, like later, will uh, want to try Pulp on uh, like normal machine on a, or your own virtual machine, it's fine that you want to use this Vagrant, but just the Pulp install, which is possible even to install from Galaxy, uh, Ansible Galaxy. So you don't have to even download the, our Git repository. Yeah, and now, it's running the installer itself, which prepared the database for you. Here I will just mention, uh, uh, as I said, there is possibility to install Pulp from PyPy, but I would recommend really to use the installer because it will set a lot of, thing, uh, a lot of things for you. For example, the database, the Pulp services, which you will have to check or a little edit manually if you use just direct install from PyPy. But the installer using these packages, so it will be the same. It's just save you a few steps for you. Yeah, here you can see like a lot of skippings, but that's fine because we support a lot of, a lot of boxes as I showed you before. So there is like, some task uh, directly for some OSs. For example, there's some differences between the CentOS and Fedora and much more than CentOS and Debian, for example. Yeah, it will take some time because there is few things we need to run the bulb. Uh, 
also also after the this database it will prepare for you the H, uh, http server so if you will or want to uh, install pulp on your server when you are already running some web services then it's good to use that manual way from pypy for example when you set all your proxies and settings of your apache on nginx or your own i just mentioned here uh, <clears throat> default to our pub installer we install the nginx but there is option to choose the apache these are two are supported web servers also this installer prepare for you self-signed certificate but still there is the option if you got your own you will just specify in that file that you are using your certificate or more option if you are like want to know more about this installation i would suggest you go for pulp installer page documentation and there is it's not big and i think it's pretty nice described Oh, sorry. Yeah, true. If you got any question or any help with the installation, if anyone follow us, please write it in the chat. We can answer you or help you. We are two of us here, so we can wait a bit and help you with the installation or anything you need to set up. Yeah, here you can set, uh, see that it's packages from PyPy, just steps more that helps you. Yeah, I think it will be near the end. That's a lot of task was already done. Yeah, sometimes if you are trying with us, that restore or sell Linux context sometimes took some time. But we are installing like clear ones, so shouldn't shouldn't take so long for us. Yeah, a few final steps. You see, like installation took like five minutes more, depends on the machine. For sure, you can even edit a little bit uh, here the vagrant setup. For example, add the memory or more CPUs. If you are familiar with vagrant, you can pretty much customize it. Yeah, now the instance. Yep, go on, Daniel. Yeah, as you can say, there's also a uh, a single container um and uh, a, a container image that you can use to run pulp um that has several plugins, including I think the Python plugin. Yeah, it, it's there, but I wanted to show just the Python today, so 
for sure you can go for a pilot project there is nice page about it it's like three steps so like three steps less than this one and you will have everything Yeah, now we got the pulp installed. So it didn't took so take some so well, so it's fine. And we can run the box or go to the server. I just show you one trick because because we are the Django application. There is possibility to use like web GUI a little bit. I wouldn't say it's really good GUI for us, but it's Django basic administration, which is pretty good. So with this command, like when you are SSHing to uh, our sandbox machine, you can say uh, to forward few ports that we can use a browser on our host machine. So let's connect. Yeah, uh, now when we are uh, installed the pulp, let's connect to it. And I would just suggest a few tools that we can use. And the first one is HTTP IE, which is Python application for like HTTP client, but it's very nice formatted and pretty colorful. So you can see like much better the answers from the server. And then there is the .NET RC for authentication because Pulp, of course, require the login and passwords to operate on it. So we will, it will pass this one. So let's install the HTTP. And let's set up our NetRC. We are on the local machine server, so let's, Say it's localhost, and this is the basic already prepared login and password, which I recommend for sure check after you're testing it if you decide to go on. So, admin and password, it's pretty what you want. This is the file, the dot, dot net rc in your home, and I think this is like pretty good prepared to show the, some workflows. Uh, just one more thing, uh, it's basic setup. So I will just use the HTTP client with F, which is like to follow the links. It shouldn't happen here, but if you are using it over the proxy or using, for example, the Docker installation, you need to follow or it will fail on first reaction. And because I didn't specify any known certificates, there is self-signed, which installer doesn't automatically add to your system. So you have to specify for your clients that you don't want to check the SSL and you want to forward. Okay, you can see the status of the pulp that we install it. We got pulper is there all the time, pulp Python and the pulp file, we just let it there. Uh, few worker, two workers. And one manager of that and online content app that I will show you it later. Ah, okay. This is the so that was the installation and just basic API call to check if the pulp is installed okay or not. So I think we can go for the some workflows. So in the first one, I will show you how to sync from PyPy. But as I said, I won't sync the whole PyPy because my machine definitely don't have such storage. So I will 
sync few packages. So the steps we will need, it will be for pulp the create repository, that will be that R repository. We will create the remote. I will stop a little bit there because there is a lot of options you can use with that. Then we sync it, prepare the publication, and then I will show you how to distribute it for more clients and just fast check up on PIP client how to set it up. So here. Will be this one. So let's continue with the sync. Yeah, and as I said before, I would prepare a few commands just alias that I don't have to uh, repeat all the time. And it's good too because uh, the basic setup for Apache or Nginx in this case. It's the default port is 24817. Uh, I think in default uh, uh, installation, it's even there is set up proxy for the 80 and 443, but I would use the default one to you can see. Okay, so as I said, the first step will be the create repository. Uh, just here, I would like to mention that I am using the API which we had, but uh, lately we heavily worked on the Pulp CLI, which will be like much more easier to use, and you don't want to need to really call the API. So this is the base uh, base call for our API. As you can see, I am using the client I mentioned and the alias I prepared. So almost everything in Pulp, starting with our Pulp API v3. So I set Pulp to create the Python repository for me and call it my PyPy. Here you see I got the response. It's pretty colorful, that's why the client. Uh, for us will be in, uh, interesting the Pulp ref that's newly created repository, which we use later on. And uh, here I create the remote. So this is will be the server where I want to download. So in our case, it's pypy.org. So this is the basic call for it. I will name it pypy. But uh, here I would like to say that if you use Python and Python vendor snatch, it's possible to use the Bandersnatch config file uh, instead of the URL. And it's just the different endpoint, which will be like remote Python, but it will be from Bandersnatch. And you will have to specify instead the URL, the file, the uh, path to config file of the Bandersnatch. I won't uh, show it to you today, but definitely there is the option and mention it here. I'll just add to that real quick. Uh, we also support uh, several of the options the Bandersnatch config file uh, supports. So like filtering out pre-releases and um, uh, putting version filters and package filters. Um, uh, so you don't sync all of PyPy, just uh, certain packages, we support a lot of those features. Yeah, and I, because when you use it like this, uh, without just the name and URL, you know, Paul tra will try definitely uh, sync whole PyPy, and that's not desirable option today. So there is the option, even from URL, not only for vendor snatch, that we can specify what we want include so I choose just two packages and it's Pygame and Django and with Django you can see that I specify it will be just Django bigger than 3.0 and that's because there is a lot of versions of Django and you will see because the Pygame is just the name it will download all the accessible versions of Pygame what we got so 
uh, or there is yet other way that's not the includes, but we can sync almost everything and just put excludes. So we can sync like everything, just few packages or the list of packages we don't want. Uh, here I would say because uh, we support the policies like download policies, so you can choose uh, from the basic options if you want to download all the packages right away. So when we are when we will be syncing, it will download all the packages on your local storage. Then there is on demand, which it's download only the metadata, and when the client asks for the package. It will download the package from PyPy and then it will serve to the client. I think there is the third one, which is stream. Um, now I'm not pretty sure if the Python one will really support it. No. So these two, as I described, uh, are what we can choose. So I think I'm pretty sure there is uh, the default one for Python is on demand. And the reason for that uh, is because PyPy, if you sync all of PyPy, is 6.8 terabytes. Um, so we, we don't want to, uh, by default, have people filling up their entire hard drive and then some. Yeah, exactly. I mentioned it, we don't want to download all that, but if you forget about the includes, includes, and just make basic sync, at least it won't start to download all that data what is on PyPy, and after that, the years, there is a lot. Okay, you can see that there is the response. Here you can see the policy, definitely. Here it's the remote address. So what we want to do now, we got our repository, we got the remote, so we can sync it. So we choose the repository, the endpoint sync, and send it like which remote you want to sync inside. Yeah, pulp is test task based system. So it will be done asynchronously that you can still work with pulp on other tasks. So I will show you here. Just let's check the, this task. You can see it's completed. There was over 200 associated content. That's because there is a lot of versions of Django, even the more than three and a lot of versions of the Pi game. So now we got it in the pulp. Uh, no, sorry. I just wanted to see my here. It's okay. So now we need because it's already synced. It's on demand, so we got all the metadata here. So we can continue. So we call the publication endpoint. We set the which repository version. Yeah, I didn't mention this one because when we create the new repository, it's starting empty. And Pulp for, uh, how to say it, for better user friendliness, uh, we use the versioning of the repository. So the our first thing, it's the repository version number one. And later I will show you when I will change anything in the repository, that this basic version still will last in the pulp and you can go back, but it's a little later for the workflow. So here we choose that repository version, we are already synced. You can see it in the creator resources when you synced in the task that this is the repository, this is the version number one. That one we want to use with the publication. So here, again, the task, so let's check it. It's completed, that's fine. Again, you can see there is creative resources and it's publication. This is uh, pretty prepared for the distribution to your users. 
but it's not like open to users yet. It's like your preparation. So now we need to distribute it. So we call the distribution endpoint Python PyPy because we always remembering. We call it name, base name, and we set which publication we want to distribute. So again, the task. We can see it's done. So our distribution is ready now. When you create this distribution, there is uh, our content app, which I mentioned before, which was visible there. And that serves the content to the users and outside. Well, here you can see, as uh, we said, the basic host name or our host name, there is the URL where the content is living. So it's pulp content, my pie pie. If you are really near to server, we use a little different port. It's 24.816. And we will show it very soon. I will just show you. Let's create the PyPy config for our new server. So it's basic global and index URL. And I will specify our local host with the port 24816 pub content and the name or the base path as I said my pi pi and that simple stuff here just for don't forget uh, to add the trailing backslash sometimes it can cause issue sometimes not but it's better for pi pi to let it like this. Let me just check it. It's fine. And we can try install, for example, by again. And you can see there is like looking for indexes, and it's already installed from our local repository. And I think that's pretty. That's the basic for the thinking. Uh, and I see we are already 33 minutes gone. So is there any questions yet? If there is no question, I can show you yet one uh, easy workflow and it's how to add your own package to your repository and how to update your distribution so we will take what we already got here and we will just add one package there. Okay, first we need to download some packages. I choose Pulp Python package from PyPy. I think that's enough like the example, so let's download it. Uh, better, or my recommendation is uh, to download it with the tar.gz, but you can, we support even the VHL and more extensions, but be aware we are checking what you are uploading to the pulp. So if you don't fit any extension which is used with the pulp packages, we want uh, the pulp denied to upload it. So there is the basic workflow. Uh, I will show you the li little harder one, like two steps, but there is possibility to do it in one step. But that's never mind. So I will update this package. I download it. It's like to just get the file to the pulp. So yeah, we got it. The artifact, we call it artifact. It count as h check sums for it and uh, uh, save it inside the media route or like the R storage. Then we have to say pulp uh, that how to work with this uh, file. 
So we set the its Python package. So it's another, like it's already content endpoint, it's Python and it's Python package. We just specify the relative path and file name. It's better, you know, to keep, and you can find it later by these names endpoints that uploaded artifacts before. As usual, it's pulp half as before everything. It's always uh, again the task. So let's check it if it was okay. It is. So we got some repositories. So I would call the repository endpoint with modify and use add content units and put there our uploaded package. Uh, not the artifact, but that content like Python package because we already worked with that. Okay, again, it's task because it's better to do it like the task. Uh, for example, if you will be uploading like package which will have like 100 megabytes, you don't want to wait until it will upload. So that's completed. You see it's the repository version 2, as I mentioned before. And here I will create a publication again, but I don't want uh, I don't use uh, the repository version as before, but I can specify just the repository which automatically the latest one will be taken. So now we got the version two, so second will be taken. Again, the task, so let's check it. So we got the publication and we don't have to, for example, now the, you can do the new uh, distribution but there is possibility we can update our existing one. So let's do it in that one. I'll just check for the pulp ref. And just I want to end uh, here. We don't use the update but put method. And you specify your distribution. You have to specify again the name and base path. So we can uh, use the same one. And now we use the publication, the newly uh, new created create one. So that publication from version two. Yeah. It's completed. And we can check our content up. that our new package was added. There is Pulp Python, and it, because this is the simple view, there will be just one that packages we uploaded. And we are pretty out of time, so I can just say, if you've got any question, just um, ask here on the chat, or there is a lot of channels if you are interested in it. Uh, there is few links for the documentation. Our main page is palproject.org. That there is you here. You will find all the demos, documentation links, GitHub links, and even the blog. And like these other ways, how to contact us? It's the pulp list, like mailing list on Red Hat or IRC on Freenode, like pulp, or we are. All, uh, also on the metrics. Uh, here are few YouTube videos. There is uh, more described the workflows and more demos about Pulp, how you can use it if Python is not enough for you. Uh, and I think that's pretty it. So any question, anything, just write us. I would say we are a pretty friendly community, so you will. We will answer all your questions. This is our page. Here the installation is, and we uh, mentioned this pulp in one container. You see it's like one, two, three commands. So pretty good.